Our today's topic is taphonomy and fossil record and in which we will be discussing about the fossil preservation. Sometimes an animal or plant dies and ends up as a fossil. But this does not happen all the time. Not all the plants or animals which are present in a particular time cannot re uh, be resulted as a fossil. Why? Because there are numerous conditions or there are some biological elements which cannot let it do it. It is the normal process of life in which one organism is born and it will die and it will return all the elements from which it is formed. For example, the elements, uh, the nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, all the elements will be returned back to the environment. So that it, these can be recycled and that results into the cycles such as carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle. But uh, sometimes a fraction of those plants and animals, they end up as fossils. And we do know what are the fossils. The fossils are the preserved remains of ancient organisms. And there are several stages that normally occur in transition from a dead body to a fossil. So it is not just that they just dropped dead and ended up as a fossil. There are some processes that it will take to change into a fossil. So the first of all, there is decay of the soft tissue of the plant and animal, right? So in case of plant, that would be skin, right? So sometimes muscles as well. And the bones will be the hard tissue, so they will be preserved. But in case of plants, there are some leaves. Leaves are very uh, soft, right? And the hard part, just like woody parts of the plants, they will be preserved. So after that, there will be transport and breakage of the hard tissue. Sometimes there are some uh, scavengers. Scavengers are the large animals who are uh, uh, feeding on the dead animals or the uh, sometimes the herbivores, they are uh, eating the plants as well. So they are breaking and uh, transporting those remains, right? So re the tissues will go from one place to another and that will result that we can find the fossils in some parts where they shouldn't be, right? So that might have been resulted as a uh, due to the transport. For example, there was some flood. So as a result that some remains were taken and to, uh, the flood took those to the riverbed, right? So this is transport. And then there is the burial and modification. Ultimately, those remains will go into the layers of the mud, sand or whatever the conditions are. And in there, there will be burial and modification. The modification means that there will be some changes that those will keep their form so that we can identify them. If they are not keeping their form, they will just become part of the rock and we cannot identify those today. So in rare cases, soft parts may be preserved and these are the example of exceptional preservation, right? So this is not something that happens every day. It is exceptional. And these are crucially important in reconstructing the past life, right? So the soft organisms, when they are preserved, they tell us much more information because uh, they are the basis of life. For example, uh, what were the organisms who first made the life? Those organisms were single cellular organisms. So single cellular organism cannot be preserved well. So if such a fossils are found, then it is a chance that those organisms are very ancient and they will give us much more information. And then there is a term larger stratum. What does the larger stratum mean? Larger stratum are the layers of the earth. There are some particular strata uh, which are containing excellently preserved fossils due to the exceptional preservation. We will find fossils in those layers in the larger stratum which are much more preserved and much more in amount as well. So these are very important in the paleontological studies. So then uh, there are two kinds of fossils. There are body fossils. The uh, partial or complete remains of plants and animals. 
and then there are the trace fossils. The trace fossils are the remains of an activity or of ancient organisms such as burrows and tracks, right? So the trace fossils might include some pieces as well, right? So uh, we will be discussing what uh, those are called. And also, for example, there are bats in some cave and the, uh, the bats are, you know, excreting their feces and feces go on the floor of the ca cave. And we have seen such fossils in which those feces become a mound and that mound transform into a complete fossil, right? So these are sort of trace fossils. And of course, there are some footprints as well. We have seen some footprints of some dinosaurs as well. So decay when large animals uh, feed on dead plants and or animal tissue, the process is termed as scavenging. And when microbes such as fungi, bacteria transform tissues of the dead organism, the process is termed as decay. So you know the difference now between the scavenging and decay. So what are the different factors which are affecting the decay? Of almost all those factors which are affecting the organisms that are involved in that activity. So oxygen, if there is anaerobic conditions, the anaerobic, uh, anaer anaerobic organism will thrive in that and they will uh, be decaying that particular uh, piece of uh, uh, carcass. And microbial nutrients, if there are microbial nutrients, then they will be able to uh, decompose that uh, a particular carcass. The temperature, if the temperature is high, very high or very low, then the decaying process cannot complete thoroughly. And so is the case for the pH. Right. So if it is very much acidic or very much basic pH, the decaying organism cannot work in that environment and they will not decay, uh, the carcass will not decay in, in, in very excellent ma manner. And uh, in case of pH, we have the example of Neolithic and younger bog bodies of the Northern Europe. Right, so in the Northern Europe, there are some uh, bog bodies. Bog, we call as the peat bog. You may have already learned about that. The, these are the bodies in which the pH is very, very acidic and due to which the, everything that goes in it they have they are excellently preserved so these are uh, called bog bodies so and then, then there are volatiles and refractories uh, soft parts of the animals are made from the volatiles form of the carbon that break down easily and refractories are the hard parts uh, such as uh, brome bones or the cellulose in case of plants and mineralization, as the name indicates, minerals, right? So if minerals deposit in anything, that is mineralization. And these depend upon the rate of burial, organic content, and the salinity. So, and then the physical and chemical effects occur, right? So what are the uh, physical and chemical uh, effects are called when a person or an organism or a plant dies? So that is called diagenesis. And then there are the con uh, conservation traps. The conservation traps are those uh, parts or those type of fossils in which there is a higher, uh, ab uh, they have higher ability to make fossils. They can trap the organism in them and the fossils are formed and th those fossils are in excellent forms. For example, abrusion deposits. Uh, there was an organism, it died and immediately there was some, uh, there was some, after uh, uh, death, there was some uh, burial activity, right? So immediately buried. And then there are the amber. Amber is fossilized resin, right? So resin is the material that comes off the trees and there are some insects which are trapped in it. So that uh, fossilized resin will be called ambers and we can see excellent uh, insect specimen today. So, and then there are the mineralization types, right? So, one is the permineralization in which the tissue is infused with the minerals. And the formation of the mineral coats, if there is an organism, the minerals are coating on it, right? So, it is just like a shell. And formation of tissue coats, a cast and shells, right? So, sometimes what happens that whole organism is there and 
it is covered up from all side with the uh, uh, cusps of the minerals just like uh, we call it urdu sanche ki tarah se ek organism hai koi jandar hai usko uh, apne andar le lega pura ka pura mineral deposit so that is called formation of tissue cost and shells so this is, these are the different mineralization types and we will be dis further discussing this topic in the next topic